We do indeed, James. You can see the little female has now crept up right next to our vehicle. So she's sitting just on the edge there, just making sure that she can see the carcass, which is directly above our heads. So we've got the one leopard that side and another leopard on our right-hand side. And it's quite amazing just to see where she is and the fact that she's so chilled with us. But she's because that she wants to see the carcass more than anything else and she's also watching the male leopard but I'm surprised at how kind of brave she is she's spending a lot of time very very close to this male leopard which I didn't think she would do generally little female leopards like this would normally be quite nervous of a male leopard but she wants the food more than anything else and that's why she's being kind of quite brave and coming this close that is so cool we are very fortunate. It is the best thing in the world to be able to see this. And now you can see Seb is going to show you there is the carcass straight above my head. So hopefully none of them go up the tree because otherwise I'm going to get a piece of meat landing on me, which won't be so much fun. So we'll try and keep that away. And if we see one of the leopards going up, then we'll try and sort of stay away from it. And where is it there, Seb? A little bit to the right. To the right and down. Down a bit. There it is. <laughs> oh, yes. So, James, you want to know how high leopards can jump? Well, James, leopards are very powerful animals. They've got some of the most powerful legs out here, and I've seen leopards jumping easily over three meters into the air, so very high. And three meters would be, in terms of feet, would be probably about, I would say, eight to ten feet into the air. So they're very, very powerful when it comes to that, and I've seen them catching birds and varying types of antelope that have tried to jump over them when they've been hunting so it's very cool to see when they do do that you can see he's just watching this little girl he knows that she's close by and he's just making sure that she doesn't get too close and he'll growl every now and again if he sees her and then there we go back to sleep again Miss Devereaux, you're wondering why the leopards have such light colored eyes. Well, you'll find that actually with these two leopards, the eyes are different. Look at the little female. She's now seen that he's sleeping and she's trying to come in. So we'll look at her eyes first because we know the male's got those light gray kind of w bluish eyes. Whereas if you see her eyes, her eyes are a little bit darker. They are more sort of an orangey color. And some leopards will even have deep brown eyes. So they all have different colored eyes. And the color of their eyes is all genetic, much like us as humans. They have the same sort of situation where they'll have genetic differences between one another and the eyes are a little bit different but you will notice that they do have a light marking just underneath the eye so that white stripe and that helps just to bring light into the eyes particularly at night when they're hunting and it helps them just to be able to see a little bit better also their eyes are made of a little bit different than what ours are in our eyes we have two types of cells we've got rods and cones now rods are the cells that pick up light so we able to see and use light to see the color and the contrast and cones help us to see color so they're the ones that are helping us to see the greens and the oranges of this leopard but with a leopard they don't have many cones they've really got only rods and those rods help for them to see at night so their eyesight at night is about as good as our eyesight during the day so you know when you walk around in the dark and you can't see anything the leopards see like it is now in the daylight it's really quite amazing that they can see that color but you can see he's growling a little bit because he's seen her now So, Kalia, leopards have spots for camouflage. Now, camouflage is a word that we use for the way that the leopard will use its environment and use the bush around it to be able to hide away. So, that's what camouflage is. And it means that this animal, leopards in particular, like to be in places like this where there's lots of trees. And when you get sun shining through trees, you'll know that there's little bits of shade. So, there's dark pieces and light pieces. And that means that the leopard's coat, where you see it's got light markings and then the dark spots, it blends in and it makes it very difficult for us to see the leopard in the shadows and that's why it has those spots is to camouflage so that it's able to hunt a lot better and to be able to find all the food that it needs to stay hidden and not be found by those prey animals because remember the things like impalas that they hunt or the diker that's up in the tree have very good eyesight and sense of smell and you see she's just going around the front now and we'll listen to him he'll start growling if he sees her getting a little bit too close see she's calling now 
She's trying to tell him, no, I'm not a threat. I just want to come and eat. And she's used to that from her mom and her brother, allowing her to get closer. But this male is not going to have any of it. He's not related to her. He's actually probably not even her father. And so that's why he's not worrying about her at all. I wonder if she's just getting a little hot in the sun and now she's trying to find herself some shade. Listen to him. He's growling a little bit. He's just telling her, I'm not impressed with you. You stay where you are. <laughs> and you can always tell with a leopard when they're unhappy. One, because they'll start growling like that. Two, their tail starts to move quite a bit. So you'll find if she does come closer, he'll start flicking his tail. And that will be an indication to her that he's not happy. Now he's still quite relaxed about things and not too worried. So... Max, I didn't quite hear that, Alice, if you can repeat it again. You said something about them losing their teeth, but I didn't hear the first part, I'm afraid. How do they attack without losing their teeth? Ah, okay, well, basically what happens is their teeth are very big and very, very strong. I don't know if you've ever tried to pull one of your teeth they're very solid in your mouth it's not like you can just pull one of your teeth out and so it's the same thing with them they will attack and they'll bite with those teeth and sometimes if they bite into bone and they pull too hard then they can break a tooth like our male over here who's got a broken tooth on the bottom of his jaw but generally their teeth are very strong and very hard and it means that they can bite into soft meat and flesh without actually having to worry about breaking their teeth too much so that's why they do it and I Ivory or bone, or, I mean tooth, is very strong. It's one of the hardest substances and it's hard to break it. Even if you tap it against something hard, you may have eaten something like a sweet that's very hard and you know your teeth can break through it. And that's how they're able to attack without breaking their teeth. Also, leopards will attack using their claws. So they're not going to only use their teeth. They're going to have very sharp claws. So their nails, basically, that come out of their paw, those are very sharp and they'll use those to scratch and cut at the animals that they are attacking and look at the size of that foot now unfortunately that's the end of our time with you guys i hope you've had a wonderful time and i hope you have a great day at school today and that you have a wonderful day and you tell your parents and everybody about all the wonderful things that you saw this afternoon on safari and we hope that we'll see you one day when you're a little bit bigger out in africa so from myself and seb and scott and james and taylor we hope that you have a wonderful day and we'll see you all soon